Amen. Um, <clears throat> this morning, I want to uh, talk to some of you. I think probably a lot of people, most people, may, in fact, uh, in here may be users of Facebook. There's a couple of holdouts that I know of. Uh, in here, Debbie's laughing back there. She knew I was going to look over there at her. Um, but if you use Facebook, uh, you're, you're familiar with the memories function, aren't you? Anybody like that? I think it's a pretty neat little thing. I was looking at my uh, Facebook memories. That for those of you who don't know what it is, uh, it's a feature of Facebook that uh, takes the post that you're either tagged in, somebody mentioned you in, or you posted, uh, and it, on that whatever that day is, uh, it brings those past posts up. And I was looking today at the, the, the memories, and I got a little picture from three years ago with Ansley, uh, with those little baby cheeks and all that. Uh, on here and going back to uh, Eli, uh, his hundred-year-old uh, self a couple of years ago when his school did that. And, uh, and then there's a video on here of um, some folks uh, at our uh, baby shower for Ansley bottle feeding. And I wish I could put this up here because it would embarrass a couple of people uh, that, are, that are sitting in here today uh, and what, <laughs> what they did. But uh, even going back 11 uh, years ago, it's a really neat feature for you to remember the things that have taken place. And every now and again, a memory have, have come up that I've seen and I went, ooh, I can't believe I wrote that or <laughs> something that you may have done. But most of the time, it's a good thing. Uh, and when you look at uh, the world around us, we have lots of ways to remember remember uh, significant events that have taken place in our lives. What may be some of those ways? You take pictures, okay? Letters. You write letters. Souvenirs. Souvenirs. Huh? Videos. Videos. Word of mouth, retelling a story, that's good. People, some people journal. They you know, do a diary, right, uh, in, their, in their life. You, you, may, you may do that. Uh, sometimes we, a lot of times, we set aside holidays. In particular, maybe it's not a whole national holiday, but maybe you just have a particular time in your, in your family that you set aside for something that is done. We set aside days uh, to be able to do that. Um, uh, sometimes you keep scrapbooks. My wife is a scrapbooker. Oh my goodness, we have a whole bookshelf of scrapbooks from her, uh, her life that she's done. And uh, each one of our kids uh, have a scrapbook uh, that she's actually just finishing up, Ethan's uh, scrapbook. What was that covering? His birth? What was? Yeah, birth to now. Birth to now? Okay. Um, and and she, I remember she, for our first, what was it, first however many dates we, I have a scrapbook that's just the first number of dates that we, that we went through and uh, some of the things, and uh, I was looking back through there at some of the receipts and wish I could pay for food, but I was paying for food back then, uh, you know, when we went out to a restaurant or something like that, but uh, she, she is a prolific scrapbooker, and it's really, really wonderful to be able to sit back and, and look at those things and remember uh, stuff that you probably have forgotten if it wasn't for uh, those scrapbooks books and uh, it just brings tears to my eyes when I go back and look over Eli's scrapbook that she's made and see how uh, see what, what, she is, what he has done throughout his life and what a wonderful tool that'll be uh, for them when they grow up uh, as she's going to keep on going and I guess I'll have to have a whole room set up for scrapbooks and stuff in there uh, but the kids all have scrapbooks uh, to, to remember and, and, and we and this device right here we take pictures and video of every single and I wrote this down this way I, I said uh, in today's world we capture every single thing we do right that's not an overstatement not, some people said, man, I, I, you don't, but people do. I mean, they capture every single thing they do. And then what others are doing, too. You can't do anything out in the world. Somebody don't have a phone out there videoing it. They got you on camera. I was back here harmlessly playing around with some youth at the lock-in, and, and me and Danny Lee got to fighting. And next thing I know, here's Peyton saying, I got that on video. And I went, what? Well, see, it had been a minute since I've been in youth ministry, and they wasn't quite that prolific back then. They could whip them out like a pistol, you know, and didn't video me. Well, I go to 
to, to the Making Mayhem game with them. And uh, Joe sends me a text message and says something like, you know, what'd you knock my daughter out for? I went, I responded back. I said, I think the video evidence shows that she was wailing on me. I mean, I'm like, boom, 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 she was hitting me. And, but if you look at the video, the video, the angle by which it's taken, when I'm like this, I bring my arm up and it looks like I hit her, but she was so exhausted from beating me up, she fell on the floor. But it looks like I went boom and just knocked it out. I said, please uh, do away with that video because I'll have to have a videographer, you know, look at the details of that. Uh, but we capture everything. So there's videos out there, probably of you, that you don't even know are there. Uh, but we use that phone, and I'm telling you, folks, really and truly, if you take a picture of every time you cook supper, something's the matter with you. <laughs> Nobody cares that you had a hot dog. Man, and what are you seriously going to do with that picture? You know, it used to be, and y'all remember this, and those of you who, who were the baby booming generation, you know, your grandparents, about how many pictures did we have of those people, give or take? One, two, I mean, if you had gotten 20 pictures of those people, that was all right, okay? We've got 40 trillion pictures of us. What are we going to do with all Look, You can't put them all in a scrap, but baby, I ain't got a house big enough for it. You know, but look, here I am. I'm out there fishing. I catch a fish this big. Click. For what? For what? I mean, what am I going to do with that picture? I try to send it to Earl so maybe he didn't catch as many or something. <laughs> if you hold the camera right, it does. <laughs> That's a seven pounder. Yeah, okay, on magnifying. Uh, but we, we literally do. We take these pictures, and it's not a bad thing for us to take pictures. We have this mechanism to take these pictures, and why do we do it? Why do, we, why do people capture all of this stuff? What's the purpose of it? You want to remember. You want to remember what's taking place. You want to remember you had a hot dog last night, you know. You want to, you're going to remember that you had, had that, uh, had, had, caught that little bitty brim and you thought it was a shark or something like that. Um, but remembering is something that every person, I think, every person cherishes. Um, and it's something we really should not take for granted. There's not many things that, that scare me as far as death is concerned, but I really do not want to have Alzheimer's. Um, that is a very, very horrible disease to where you can be as healthy as a horse, but you're, you're fading away. And I've had family members, and you know family members of people uh, that have that now or have had that. And, and you lose who you are. You, you can't remember uh, those people. And that is a very, very sad thing. And so all these memories that we have, we cherish them. We, we shouldn't take it for granted. Um, but memories are not just good for helping us uh, to remember the things that we've done uh, in our lives, but it's also good for us to remember what God has done. Amen? Uh, and that's what we're going to focus on this morning is the title is Remember to Keep the Faith. Um, we're going to take a look in the book of uh, Joshua, um, which is the book that records uh, Joshua leading the Israelites into the promised land uh, after Moses uh, has passed away. Um, but in order for them to be able to get into the promised land, they've got to cross the Jordan River. Uh, and God instructs the priest uh, to carry the Ark of the Covenant. What was inside of the Ark of the Covenant? Oh, something's not on your notes. See there, you're not prepared. Huh? That's one. Jar of manna. Okay. And what else? Oh, see, Glenn, you get a gold star this morning, sir. Uh, <laughs> uh, all three things were, well, three different objects uh, that, were, that were in there. So this is a really, really holy, uh, the Ark of the Covenant was a holy uh, object. What? Uh, what, what happened? What, what was the Ark of the Covenant? What, what would happen? Uh, where was it kept, I should say, generally? In the, in the Holy of Holies, okay? Uh, so it symbolized God and, and his presence, all right? Uh, and so the, the, the God had instructed the priest to carry the Ark of the Covenant ahead of all the other people and to go down into the Jordan River, 
Um, and, he to, and he told them that when they got into the river, that it would stop flowing in order for the Israelites to cross. And I've referenced this in your notes in Joshua chapter 3, verses 6 through 13, because I'm not going to read all of these chapters you know, to you this morning. But that has been what has taken place. Now we're going to pick up here in Joshua chapter 3, verses 14 through 17. And it says, So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan... The priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priest who carried the Ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from the upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarethan. While the, while the water flowing down to the Sea of the Arabah, that is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off, so the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground, while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. Uh, if you look uh, back at verse 15, it gives us an important point, uh, piece of information here. The Jordan is at flood stage during the, all during the harvest. What's that mean? It's overflowing. It's at its highest pool, probably, uh, uh, nor normally. Uh, and, and this would have made it impossible for the nation of Israel to have passed uh, and crossed over safely. So God performed this miracle so that the people could have safe passage uh, across the, uh, the, the Jordan River. And on the other side was the land that God had promised to them, the Canaan land, the promised land. Land And in Joshua chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, it says, When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Choose twelve men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up twelve stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priests are standing, and carry them over uh, with you, and put them down at a place where you stay uh, tonight." So if you can imagine this, you have the whole nation of Israel standing over here, and they're, uh, they're needing to cross this river. So the priests take this very holy object, and God's told them, go out there in the middle of that flood stage river, and it'll, you know, Joshua's telling them, it'll stop flowing. How much faith did it take for those priests to do that, you imagine? Okay, they're looking at the same water that you and I would have been looking at rushing across there, hopefully, and... Uh, right about June, I'm going to be able to, maybe not see this exact spot, but I'm going to be able to see that Jordan River when Jim and myself are going to be going to Israel um, and, and crossing over with the Ark of the Covenant. So they would have they probably been a lot more nervous about the Ark itself than it would have been their own lives now. But they do this, and that river stops. Now the priests stand there, and God has performed this miracle. The priests stand there while the whole nation of Israel crosses. And Jim, don't answer this. Anybody have any estimation, and it can only be an estimation because the numbers vary widely, but how many people needed to cross? You know that number to be exact? <laughs> she just said four million. Bug said millions. I think the, the lowest estimates go down to like 30,000. I don't know why it's 30,000 30, all, the, all the way up into the millions, 2 million. I think a, a lot of people land or somewhere around about 2 million uh, people that would have, would have been there. And, and there's all different kind of studies that you can go and look and see how many people uh, it was. It really doesn't matter. It was a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people. And then poor priests had to stand there the whole time while all of those people uh, went, went across. But you can see there was no way that they were going to be able to cross uh, and have children. You say, well, the, the people could have swam across there. Yeah, I mean, maybe adult people could have swam across the Jordan River. But you had the entire nation of Israel. This is women, children, men, uh, all types of people, and, and, and some livestock and other things that I'm sure that they had in their possessions at the time uh, as well. They needed to go across on dry land, and God provided that way for them. He tells them to take those stones uh, to, to go and get these men to, to go where those priests are standing and pick 12 stones. Uh, and if you look at verse 7, these stones were selected to be a memorial to the people of Israel, to be a memorial forever uh, for them. And let's take a look at uh, verses 19 uh, through 24. 
All of that's already taken place. They've got the stones. They've placed the stones already. And it says, on the 10th day of the first month, the people went up from the Jordan and camped at Gilgal uh, on the eastern border of Jericho. And Joshua set up at Gilgal the 12 stones they had taken out of the Jordan. He said to the Israelites, in the future, when your descendants ask their parents, what do these stones mean? Tell them, Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. The Lord your God did to the Jordan what he had done to the Red Sea when he dried it up before us until we had crossed over. He did this so that all the Jordan, uh, so that all the peoples of the earth might know uh, that the hand of the Lord is powerful, and so you might always uh, fear the Lord your God. Um, we see that, again, the people did what Joshua had told them. They took the 12 stones, they set them up. And what was the purpose of this pile of stones? To remember what? To remember the miracle. It, he, he, he tells us, you know, here uh, in verse 21, he said to the Israelites, in the future, when, you just, when your children ask, when these descendants ask their parents, what do these stones mean? You'll be able to tell them. It was, they were remembrance stones. They were memorial stones uh, that were put there. And you think that what a great miracle that had taken place. It was worthy to have some memorial stones put there, right? It's worthy to remember. Wouldn't you imagine? So, and it tells us in this passage too, that it reminds us that God parted the Red Sea whenever the, the Hebrews were leaving Egypt, uh, they were being chased by Pharaoh and they had to get across the Red Sea and God parted the Red Sea as well. Moses went out with his staff and parted the Red Sea. They walked across on dry ground. What happened to Pharaoh? <laughs> they... I don't know how much he swam, but uh, the, the, he found himself in a wet situation. We're going to put it, put it like that because they tried to go across on the dry ground. And, you, and I was talking in Sunday school this morning because the lesson we're going on the next couple of weeks is to discern the voice of God. And we're talking about uh, knowing the voice of God uh, uh, today. And we got into talking about the Bible. And I mean, is there anything in the Bible, and I, I hate to use this almost derogatory term, that's not crazy? It's not almost illogical, fantastical, whatever you want to put. I mean, if you don't believe, you, you can't say, oh, this over here, that's just too much for me to handle. But you believe that God parted the rivers twice? You know what I mean? I mean, axe head floats, donkeys talking. I mean, the three men you know, going into a fire and coming out, no smell of smoke. Uh, Jonah being in the belly of a whale for three days and then coming out. Jesus being virgin born. I mean, come on. Mary deciding she's going to go forward with doing this. Joseph not divorcing this crazy woman, coming and telling him that she's pregnant, but he knows he hasn't been with her. I mean, the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it deals with things that are miracles. That defy logic that God is doing. Is today any different? Our world is filled, your life is filled with things that defy logic. That you can't make sense of. Things that God is doing in your life. He's the same yesterday. He's the same right now today. He's going to be the same tomorrow when you wake up. It's the same exact God. Like the Israelites... Uh, again, God does these things for us. He does stuff like this for us on a daily basis. And he wants us to remember it. And what is the value of remembering what God has done for you? What did you say, Earl? Keeps you away from your sin. What did you say, Amanda? Strengthens your faith. What else? You remember it so you can give him praise. What did you say, Mary Beth? So that you can help to teach others. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as what Amanda was saying, the more memorial stones you lay down in your life, the stronger your faith absolutely will be. Okay. Uh, that, that's a promise I can, I can make to you this morning. Amanda was 
Bernie was and all these Amandas and Debbies and Dennis's and all this stuff in here. But Amanda, Amanda Bernie was up here earlier talking about if you're going through trials, if you're going through tribulation, if you're going through something uh, uh, today. And, and we're going to have trials and tribulations that come our way. Um, and we need to remember what God, in those moments, you have to remember what God has already done for you. All right? In those times, you're thinking all about the trial and tribulation that you're currently sitting in. Sometimes we have to go back and recall, remember, have that memorial of where God has brought us already. What has he already done for us? And that remembrance will absolutely increase our faith and help you get through those extremely hard and difficult uh, times. Um, when, when we talked a little last week about uh, getting into some of those difficult times and, and about how we, you know, we, we can't even pray when we get, we don't know what to pray for when we get into those low points. Um, but when we get to those places, I, ha I had to submit this to you. When you get to that place, and if you're in that place today, I hate to tell you, that you have either been, if you're in a low place where you just absolutely are distraught uh, and, and, and down, you're either ignoring what God has done for you, or you have forgotten it altogether. You're either saying, I choose not to remember. I'm going to ignore all those things that God, I'm just got to focus on this stuff that's right in front of me, this tragedy that is right here in front of me. Or you have really just not laid down any memorial stones and you truly have just forgotten that God has sustained you to get you to where you stand right now. And, and that is that's absolutely the, the, what, what, what has taken place. And so that's why the title is this morning, Remember to Keep the Faith. I'm not telling you, Remember, you need to keep the faith. I'm telling you, remember so you can keep your faith. So you can be strong. We talked a little bit about spiritual on Wednesday night. We talked very briefly about the shield of faith. That shield of faith, it says that when, you know, does a shield work if it's down here? If, it's kind of, if you're lay, laying it down here, it, ex it exposes you. What do you got to do with a shield for it to work? You got to raise it up. And it says when we raise it up that it would extinguish the fiery flames of the enemy. I want you to understand Satan is shooting flames at you every moment of every day. Never stops. He never says, hey, there's a ceasefire right now. No, sir. Uh-uh. The only time there's a ceasefire is when you start doing everything he wants you to do. Then maybe he'll, start, he'll stop shooting. Uh, but I doubt it that he even does that. So he's shooting all these arrows at you. And the Bible tells us that that shield is our faith. And that faith is what extinguishes that error. It stops it from penetrating. You know, you, it stops those trials and tribulations from hitting you and hurting you. And But guess what? If I was to give you a 100-pound shield to hold in your, you, typically, you hold a shield in your non-dominant arm, right? Because what needs to be in your dominant hand? A sword, okay? So I would just imagine if I'm holding up a 100-pound shield, what's going to happen over a period of time? You're going to get tired. You're going to get weak. And this starts to happen. Okay. Here, Moses... Y'all know the story? He's standing there, and the Amorites and them are fighting the Hittites, and he's, he's holding the staff in his air. As long as he holds the staff in the air, Israel's winning. What started to happen to his arm? He got tired. Aaron and that woman, I mean, no, her. No, I'm sorry. Her, H-U-R. That was a joke. Good grief. I, every time in church, they always talked about Aaron and her. I'm thinking it was a lady. And then I read the Bible and seen the spelling. So Aaron comes up with her and they support his arms. Okay. And every now and again, you need a little bit of support. Maybe it's not somebody else that's going to come over there and support your arms like that. But you can, if you have something to fight for, sometimes you get discouraged. And it's a mental battle, not necessarily a physical battle. Uh, in the movie Overcomer, I don't know if y'all were able to see that movie. Uh, and it was done by the Kendrick brothers. And, and there was a, uh, they were the ones that did... Uh, all of those uh, uh, movies, what am I trying to say? Facing the Giants and all of that. 
uh, and he's coaching this girl, and she's running in a race, and, and, and her, her dad is kind of coaching her on, the, on an earpiece, and he's telling her, you know, your body is going to tell you that you're tired, that you're, that you're giving out, you know, but you, you, you got to keep going. Your mind's going to tell you that, I'm sorry, but you got to just push through that. And most everything we're going through, most everything you're going through right now is a mental battle first before it ever gets to you in any kind of a physical way. And if you can, when we remember, what are we doing physically? Nothing. We're mentally remembering the things that take place. And when you go back, and in that weak spot when that shield starts to drop, when you begin to remember what God has done for you, what God has done for people in the Bible, what God has done for you personally, what he's done for your family, what he's done for all these people around you, I can promise you, when you start filling your mind with that kind of stuff, then your body responds to your mind. And you're able to stand there even harder. But if you let the enemy get in and start putting those things before you in your mind, uh, then it is going to take over uh, what your body is doing. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. That is the definition of faith in the Bible. To put it another way, faith is trusting in something you cannot explicitly prove. Um, remembering what God has done for us will help us to increase our trust more. I won't do it because it may be a little off camera, but <clears throat> if I take this chair, I reckon this chair can hold me up, right? I'm pretty sure this chair can hold me up. I believe it can. Is that trusting? Yes. No, it's not. No. Trusting is this. Oh, yeah. All right, we're good. Man, I get to sit down like y'all. I think I may start doing this. <laughs> when I'm 90, I'm going to have to, okay? After how I'm riding these knees. When, when you trust is when you actually do it. When you have the faith, faith is not just believing in your mind. Faith is absolutely putting, it's, it's not a noun, it's not just something that, 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 that you talk about that, that we have or something like that. Faith is a verb, it's something that you do as you express it, it's like a muscle uh, that, that you have. And I know there are so many people sitting in this room right now today, I've talked to some of you this week. And you said, I've, boy, this has been a horrible week. I've been going through this, and I've been going through that, and, and these things. You look at the prayer wall that we have out there and the list of things that people are going through. And you may not have said anything to anybody about the things that you're going through, but you're sitting here this morning, and you're going through a whole lot of stuff, and you're kind of down this morning. It's a gloomy day, and, it's, and, and you got a gloomy you know, outlook right now. But let me ask you something. Are you blessed? Are we all blessed collectively in what God has done for us? Are we going to let our present circumstances and what the scriptures say dictate all the things that God has done for us over all of this time? No, we are not. That's exactly what Satan wants you to do. He wants you to be like we were talking today. God said, don't eat just from, they, Adam and Eve could eat from any tree they wanted to. The tree of life. All the trees in the garden. How many trees did God say not to eat from? Just one. What a horrible thing. You can have whatever you want, all the food in this whole buffet, but leave the banana pudding alone. <laughs> you know, y'all just can't do it. You know, you got to go out there. It tempts you at that point. And we think, well, God is, how horrible is he that that you, you think, and when you're only looking at your current situation that you're in right now, you're saying, look, God, how, how unmerciful are you? How horrible are you to allow this bad thing to happen to me in my life right now? That's, that's a limited perspective, isn't it, really? I mean, I, I'm, like, I'm like that, too. We're all of that way. But like I said, when we get to those moments in our life, we are ignoring what God has done for us. In the end of your notes, I ask you a question. Have you been laying down memorial stones along the way of your life? And ask yourself too, how does your faith hold up 
when things are hard. When things are really tough and things are really bad, how do you respond faith-wise? And I promise you, if you go back and look at how you respond faith-wise, it will have a correlation to how much time or effort you've put in to remembering what God has done for you. We sing a song in the hymn book called Count Your Blessings, right? And I think that it's really good sometimes for you to sit down, and, and I did this one day mentally. I don't know if I want to tell the story or not. I'm sorry, my brain's that, my, my filter was kicking in to see if this was something I should say uh, or not, so I had a buffering moment. Um, but there have been times in ministry where it really, really gets tiring. And I've shared some things with you before. And I've sat there and had pity parties and go, you know, God, you, you do all this stuff and, 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 and you, you don't have hours and you're here whenever people uh, need you to be. You know, usually people call and you, you try to be there and you're doing this and you're doing that. Yet, in a moment's notice, people have turned their back on you like that. And you start going, man, is it worth it? to do all this and, and to be this and to put up with this kind of junk. And you start, you know, <laughs> having a pity party and you realize, what did Jesus have to go through? And, who, and he told me when I signed up for this gig that this is the way it was going to be. He said, the, what did he tell the disciples that the world was going to do to them? They were going to persecute them for his name's sake. Okay? And so I sat back and go, who am I to, 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 to waller in any kind of stuff? When there were people, when Jesus got down to that hard teaching, they just walked away from him. They just left him. I mean, look at his disciples, the 12, and they tucked tail and ran. How did he feel, you know? And so you start putting things, I tell you that, because put things in perspective. And we all have to do that sometimes. Put your trial and tribulation that you're going through right now, put it in perspective to all the things that God is doing around you. And remember, you will get through this. I promise you. You will. And Satan is there. He's like, you're not going to do it. You're not going to be able to make it. You're not strong enough. All you got to do is turn around and say, you know what, buddy? You're right. I'm not strong enough. But God is. Okay? God is. And, and he is going to be the one. He's going to be the one that's going to take care of that stuff. So remember last week, you're sitting there, you're praying, you're praying, you're praying. How many times does our prayers have to get changed? I'm thankful that the Holy Spirit changes my prayers sometimes or, or just says, you know, that's really dumb, Corey. I'm just not even going to bother with that. I've, I've got the right plan and you just sit there and take it, okay? I want Amanda, if you will. Uh, is that what you want, Ken? Okay. Amanda to come up here and I want y'all to, uh, we're going to sing the first verse and the chorus of this song. And I want you to sing this song in closing this morning and really think about what God uh, has done for us. If you'll stand with me uh, and let's, let's, sing this, let's sing this song and sing these words out uh, to the Lord and then we'll be dismissed this morning.
Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, uh, Lord, that all we have needed you have provided uh, unto us, Father God. And, and great is your faithfulness to every single one of us, Father God, to, to never leave us, to never forsake us, to sustain us, Lord, through everything that we've ever been through and everything that we're ever going to go through, Father God. And we thank you, Lord, for the faithfulness that you have uh, to be our sovereign Lord. And Lord, may we be able, uh, Lord, to, to return that faithfulness God, to you, you bestow upon us a grace and mercy, Lord, that we do not deserve. And Father, I pray that for every single one of us that we would, if we've not been already, put some memorial stones in place in our lives, Lord, to say that is where God has delivered me. That is where, Lord, you have done something mighty in our lives, Lord. And for us to keep that in our minds, Father, because we know that the days and the weeks and the months and years ahead, God, are going to be uh, having, having their own trials and tribulations. There are going to be some bad times ahead of us, Father God. But we are going to be able to persevere because we can know without a shadow of doubt that you have already taken care of us and you will fulfill your promise to continue to take care of us, Father God. Help us to remember so that we can keep the faith, Lord, so that Satan cannot lie to us and that he has no power and no authority over our lives. Go with us, Lord, as we leave this place this morning. Keep us safe, Father God. Help us to be about your business as we enter into the mission field. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.